Hey guys, Snowman back out in the shop again. Uh, figured I'd make a video where you guys could see the entire process of me going through some scroll saw work instead of just getting bits and pieces of it. Uh, what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and release a weekly video. Uh, I'll probably hit my channel uh, Fridays whenever I wake up. Since I work the night shift out in the shop, I'm usually up until 4, 5, 6 o'clock in the morning. So, during the day, I'm comatose. But, um, I'm going to be doing a scroll saw pattern uh, on one of the two uh, $1 plywood frames that I've uh, picked up at Michael's Crafts. And, I just recently posted a uh, slideshow video of uh, projects that I have uh, that I'm working on and uh, projects that I've finished. Uh, this right here, and I'm not sure how much of the uh, pattern you're actually going to be able to see, but this is the pattern for the next picture frame. Uh, my own style of knot work. And this guy right here is the next victim. It's uh, about half inch thick uh, hobby plywood. Uh, stuff cuts so nicely for such a cheap frame. Unfortunately, and I'm not sure if you'll be able to see this on the video, but it's a bit warped. So cut, while I'm cutting it, it's going to rattle like an SOB on the uh, scroll saw table. So I'm going to try and figure out if I want to actually um, cut this pattern into this thing or not, I'll go buy a new one. Because they're only a dollar. But, uh, simple process for uh, laying down a pattern for any work that I do is first, of course, uh, freehanding the pattern or getting a pattern off of one of the many scroll saw websites. Uh, uh, the one site that I like to get a lot of my patterns from is uh, called the Scroll Saw Workshop. Uh, they have a lot of simple patterns to slightly advanced patterns to very advanced patterns depending on your skill level. And some of the items you guys have seen me make are actually uh, from patterns from that website. Like, and she's not completely glued together yet, but this uh, small toy tractor uh, is actually a pattern from... Uh, the scroll saw workshop and it's a good it's a it's a decent size it's not that small but it's a good size for a kid to wrap their hand around and have fun with uh, not too many small pieces except for this stack I, I modified the stack from the original plans because it had you uh, taking a 3 8 inch dowel and drilling it through the center to run this quarter inch dowel through it and I'm just thinking some kid with a stack this tall is just going to snap the thing off while he's playing with it and be all upset that he broke his new toy. Well, eliminate that problem. So, anyways, um, other stuff around the show. Oh, oh, you guys have not seen the new toy that my father has. And by, by toy, as we rip the camera off the stand again, ha! By toy... And this has taken forever for them to finally get in stock, is his new Excalibur scroll saw. And limited 30th edition Excalibur. Now, I'm not touching this thing. This is his baby. And I'm not going to mess with this one at all. I'm going to let him, well, let him. It's his. It, it's his. I'm going to just not bug him about trying to learn how to use it because I still have the old Dremel. This old Dremel 2 speed is every, is the same scroll saw that I cut out everything that you've seen on my videos so I'm gonna just keep working with what I know. Uh, oh and since we're talking about cutting stuff out this little lamp right here, this little screw clip on clamp lamp uh, I needed some light for the scroll saw tables, and hey, it's a 2x4, let's make something out of it. So, I ended up taking a 2x4 and going nuts on it on the bandsaw and the router table at around 
all these edges off. And I made myself a uh, lamp stand. I don't know what the heck you would call this, but I know it looks as rough as it is. But it was something I I hacked out on the uh, bandsaw in about an hour, and yeah, you know me and my loops. What are you gonna do, right? So, anyways, I'll pause the video here, and uh, over the next uh, several minutes, I'll show you guys a sped up version of the process of mounting the uh, pattern on my next victim. <laughs> Okay, so the main purpose is, of putting the tape down on the wood first is when I use the uh, spray glue on the paper pattern, uh, it won't leave the surface of the wood all mucked up. It'll peel off nice and clean and any uh, minor bits of glue from the tape that decide to stick I can, it will just sand off as opposed to the... Uh, spray glue which would actually soak into the wood a little bit and cause all sorts of problems. So one last layer of tape and we're good to go. The reason I'm being so precise with all, with all this tape is I don't want it to go over the edge of the wood uh, and cause me issues with the pattern buckling and not laying down straight. Or flat, rather. Okay, so finish cutting. I'll finish cutting up this pattern and glue it down, and then get to put another layer of tape over the pattern. And what that second layer of tape does is um, it's extra insurance to make sure the pattern lays flat, so that you actually get the design on the wood that uh, you intended in the first place. Okay. Now, one of the easiest things, uh, easiest spray booths, I guess you could call it, that I've ever heard of, uh, got, from, got the idea from one of my fellow woodworkers, uh, Steve Ramsey. And, uh, yep, throw it in the box. That way, if your overspray goes anywhere, it goes onto the cardboard. No harm, no foul. I have a tendency to use too much glue because I don't want the pattern to go anywhere. So, you got to let it dry for a couple of seconds so it goes from liquid to tacky and then you can smooth it onto your project. And uh, then can, can bleh. Gotta, I swear, i got to get tongue tied at least once per video or it's just not a snowman video. <sighs> okay, so once your glue is a little tacky to the touch, doesn't take very long. You can lay down your pattern if you're really careful it actually comes out the way you want it to. And voila! One solid pattern on the wood. So I'm going to uh, cover this one in tape and then comes the fun part. 
every place you see an X, I have to drill a hole. Because we've got to get the blade through somehow. when you glue a pattern over something with a hole you make a very impromptu finger drum. Yeah I know I'm weird but that's why you watch my videos. Now I'd love to take credit for this whole tape glue tape idea, but um, Steve Good, uh, one of my fellow woodworkers out here in YouTube land, actually, uh, is the one I learned this from off of one of his videos and uh, from my father teaching me uh, how to get it right. So, uh, at this point, Patterns down, glued, taped, and all that happy stuff. So, drill time. Oh, yeah, this damn bug bit me right on my face. But, um, anyways, since I'm only going to be using a uh, number two blade, because uh, it gives such a nice uh, smooth cut, uh, especially when I'm doing my knot work pieces, which are very delicate, uh, I only need to use a number 49 drill to drill out all the pilot holes for where I'm going to feed the uh, blade through for the cutouts. Okay, so, drilling is done, switch cheese the board so I can get all my uh, blade starting spots ready. Now, the fun part, changing the blade. The last blade I had on the machine was a number three, um, and it's just too coarse for the type of work that uh, I'm going to be doing on this picture frame. Uh, the plywood being what it is, I'm afraid I'll have too many tear outs on the back of the wood uh, that won't be able to be sanded out because it'll be broken off of the board. So, move the camera again. <laughs> now, you guys have seen me scroll saw before. I know you have, right? Right. So, yes, I know. Moving the camera around make everybody dizzy. <laughs> But, my battery is screaming at me saying, hey, charge me, dumbass. Well, I can't charge you. I can at least plug you in. Yes? Yes? Yes. Okay. So, pretty much that's the process. Um, I mean, obviously, um, not every piece that I'm going to make is going to be from a pre-cut piece of wood that I bought at a shop. That's actually very rare for me. Usually I like to take raw board and do it myself. So I'll get to cutting on this and I will uh, post what it looks like at the end of the video. Okay, so got the thinnest part of the pattern done on one corner. Got rock blaring away on the radio and let's see, it is almost 2.30 in the morning. Okay. You know what? At this point, I need caffeine. If I want to stay safe on that saw, I need to be alert. So, I'm going to go get some caffeine, and you guys are coming with me. Why? I don't know. Something to do? 
with a mighty rattle, we're off like a herd of turtles. Now I'm just, uh, uh, need the caffeine to stay safe. Um, and for some reason, I just feel like bringing the um, video camera with me. I mean, this this channel isn't all about just being in the work workshop. It's uh, about pieces of my life that I like to share with the world. And one of my pieces is I'm a highly caffeinated individual, so <laughs> why not, right? Now, if he's there tonight, uh, James, the guy that works behind the counter, uh, he's been keeping up on my uh, woodworking stuff and always wants to be updated on any new projects I have going and things like that. So. I'll probably end up putting the camera down on the counter and showing him a couple of pictures on my cell phone. Eh, maybe. I don't know. It's James. It's cool. James and Pops are here. Right on. So you guys can meet a piece of my YouTube audience. Well, wait a minute. You are my YouTube audience. Anyways, you know what I'm talking about. So, per usual, I... Uh, rip the camera off the stand and hope for the best. Uh, how is my cell phone? There it is. <clears throat> hey, hey. Say hello to YouTube. Hey, what's up? <laughs> I figured I'd, I'd, take, I'd take this yeah. to so the guys could meet you eventually. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, I'm here every damn night yeah, buying yeah, some yeah, caffeine, yeah, yeah. so... Every night, I mean, usually there's a bunch of people in here, right? Yeah. I, it's, I, it's there tonight. I was going to say, isn't that Pop's truck out there? Yeah, yeah, he's got it running, he was uh, putting oil in it, so he's in there, he just started. Oh, okay. I think he lets it warm up and he chills in there for a minute. Oh, I gotcha. Yeah, so anyways, more caffeine as usual. Let's see what I want, that's what I want. Now I decided this time I'm going to mix one of my woodshop videos with a car ride. Oh, okay. There you go. So you're on camera. Yeah, there you go. Candy camera. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. So, that's what, that's well, what you're doing. You got home working on it, something? Oh, well, I have a new uh, scroll saw project. I'm doing um, some picture frames. All right. Anyways, okay, yeah. guys. So, caffeine. Right. That's good, man. We have caffeine. Yes. We're good. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so caffeine has been successfully captured, and we go back to the house and back on the saw. And we have an idiot driving no headlights on. Oh, that's, that's always good. We need music. And green light. Yeah. Retro rock, Guns and Roses, why not? It's 3 o'clock in the morning, most people are asleep. Unlike second pass than me, they like to use sharp instruments to carve wood. Uh, oh well. Since my father runs the shop during the day, uh, it's being a small garage shop, there's just no room for both of us to be working in there at the same time. because. More often than not, we'd end up needing the same machine to uh, work on our projects. So instead of just banging heads with each other, I just said, you know what? I'm a night owl anyways. I'll take the night shift and we'll just go from there. So what he does is he leaves plans on the workbench that he of uh, projects that he needs made for the shop um, to sell. And you know, scrap wood is fair game for me to make little projects of my own. And that's what I do. And bring it to you guys. And just like that, it's done. So, kind of a uh, almost floating frame design uh, with the square in the center that holds the pictures, um, barely being supported. Well, it's supported by here and here, but you know what I mean.
uh, scroll work is done. Uh, I actually ended up mangling a blade on this. Oh yes, and I gotta love my father's bandsaw work. This is his uh, walnut bandsaw box, and I love the design on it. Curvy, just like the stuff that I make. So, scroll saw work, all said and done. And next part of it is going to be the stain or paint. I haven't decided which yet, but uh, take a one dollar frame from a uh, pre made frame from a craft store and turn it into a uh, Fifteen dollar keepsake. Eh, at least I can hope. I hope I can sell it for that much. I mean, I put a few hours of work into the scroll sawing, so we'll see what happens. I right, guess. As always, that stick is the next victim. More to come.